Good morning, everybody. Um, you know, first off, would like to to thank the Orange Bowl. This has been uh, a fantastic experience for our team and our staff. I think it's been since 1960 since University of Georgia was here at the Orange Bowl. For me, uh, this is my first time professionally. I know for for several of our coaches and uh, staff and players. So coming here, it's a unique experience. We got in last night, um, or I guess yesterday afternoon. Um, we're able to get settled, and uh, so far everything has been absolutely first class. I'm really proud of uh, the work our team has done to get here. Uh, proud of their preparation here uh, once the season wrapped up and uh, going into the holidays. Our guys are eager and hungry to get back out there on the field together and um, certainly excited to see the product that we're able to put on the field here when we, when we hit uh, the field against Michigan. That being said, uh, we can go ahead and get opened up. All right. First question, uh, Ralph Russo. Go ahead. Hey, Dan, uh, congratulations on the new gig. Um, um, wanted to ask you about, obviously, you know, the last game. I know you've been asked about that a lot. But I guess what I'm wondering is when you have one bad game out of the season, how does that – what does that look like when you go back and start look, reviewing that compared to other games? Is it a back-to-the-drawing-board situation – um, is it a, um, just, oh no, we only need to make a couple of tweaks. Like when you're sort of recovering from a game where a lot of things didn't go right, what does it look like for a coach to dig in on that compared to games where a lot of things go, went right, which you had for most of the season? Yeah, I think you have to approach it like any game that, um, that we have had this season where you go back and you try to be analytical regardless of, of the result. Um, we, we take a deep dive every single game when we're successful. We take a deep dive when we're not. Uh, and our approach didn't change after this past game. You know, I think you give a lot of credit uh, where credit's due. They did a great job against us. And I think they're left a little bit of hunger there for us, Ralph, to go back out there and get an opportunity to play again. Okay, next question, uh, Dennis Dodd. Go ahead. Dan, kind of the same thing again. Congratulations on Oregon. Um, is there a wounded pride factor to this, to, to the defense? I know Ralph asked the question, but but just digging down on this, do you have to address that first? Or, or again, is it all technical? Our guys are excited to compete. I mean, every time we take the field, I, I don't think it matters if it's practice and we're doing team run against each other um, or if it's game day, our guys want to go out there and, uh, prove their worth. I think they've done that week in and week out this season. Uh, and, you know, and the fact that we had a hiccup doesn't affect what we want to do going forward. Luckily for us ending that game, every single one of our goals, you know, still stands in front of us in this, this opportunity. There's four teams in the nation that get to go play, uh, right now at this, at this level. I think we recognize that opportunity in front of us and want to go take advantage of it. Okay, next question is for Mark Schlebaugh. Go ahead. Morning, Dan. Can you just describe what the last few weeks have been like trying to balance the new role and, and your responsibilities at Georgia and keeping the proper balance? And I know you've hired a couple of a few, a few assistant coaches. How much have you been able to get out to Eugene, if at all? You know, I went out one time um, initially right after after getting hired and really excited about what we're putting together there. Um, you know, my focus, the, the good thing, again, West Coast being three hours behind us um, is giving us the opportunity to be able to really focus on Georgia uh, early on during the day and then later on at night, able to get a lot of things accomplished with our team there at Oregon uh, and our staff as we're piecing that together. And next question for Tim Reynolds. Dan, good morning. Um, we're seeing we all know what's going on in the world right now with, with the virus numbers, of course. We're seeing some bowl games unable to go forward. Hey, Tim, sorry you got cut off there. Can you repeat that question? Yeah, Dan, I was asking you about, about the virus and, and what's going on. We see some bowl games unable to go forward. Um, you guys are here to be safe, but also it's a ball game. You want the kids to have an experience. How important is that balance that, you know, you have the beach outing and team dinners and stuff like that. How important is that even at a time like this to give the kids that bowl experience? 
you know, I, ultimately, I think every one of our kids, if you ask them, would tell you that we came here for one purpose. Um, but I'll say this. I, I, you know, I've got a um, tremendous amount of respect for our medical staff, you know, Ron Corson and his staff and the precautions they've taken to, to prepare our kids. Uh, I also give our, our players a lot of credit for how diligent they've been on uh, taking proper precautions, whether it be wearing the mask through the hotel or when they're out and about. Um, but we came here to win a football game and uh, we're, we're excited about everything that, that the Orange Bowl does for our players. But uh, there's no secret what, what we came here for. Next question for uh, Andrea Adelson. Go ahead. Hey, Dan, uh, when you look at uh, Michigan and their offensive line and what they do with their running backs, what type of challenge do they present that might be a little bit different than what you've seen this season? Yeah, Michigan plays football. You got to give Coach Harbaugh and Coach Gaddis credit with, with the way they, you know, they have running backs that can run the ball. They use uh, tight ends like, like a lot of people don't use tight ends today, you know, in some, some ways similar to what our offense does. Um, they run hard mouth. Uh, you know, smash mouth football plays, you know, they, they demand some physicality up front, which I know uh, we're excited to see. And then they have the ability to tack you downfield. So I just think they, they show tremendous balance in the way they prepare uh, in the way they play the game. And uh, it's going to be a physical football game, which I know uh, we certainly appreciate. Okay, next question for David Hale. Hey, Dan. Um, Cade McNamara has a, a very interesting throwing motion for a quarterback. It's sort of that sidearm, almost like a shot put type of delivery. Have you seen that before with a quarterback? And, and what does, does that present a different challenge for your guys who are trying to you know, disrupt passing lanes and stuff like that? You know, for us, schematically, I don't think we change um, a lot of how we attack that, you know, but I do think he has an extremely quick release um, that shows up on film. He's very accurate with the way he delivers the ball and the fact that he can release it from different passing angles is unique. Um, you know, always, always for us, there's going to be an emphasis in trying to affect the passer and what that looked like and, you know, can be different based on on each game. Um, but for him, that's that's no different for us. We want to be able to get our hands up you know, in passing lanes. We want to be able to close you know, to him and create some tough throws. And then we want to make sure he has to throw into tight windows. So, uh, but he's shown that he can do that. So he, he, he uh, you know, is going to give us an opportunity. We have to go out there and play our best to be able to stop that. Thanks. Uh, next question from Mike Griffith. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Oh, excuse me. Can you unmute me? Uh, can you unmute me, please? Dan, You're unmuted, Mike. Go ahead. You can talk. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate you calling on somebody that covers the team. Uh, yeah, Dan, a two-part question here. Uh, one, Michigan does profile as a power team, and yet they have all these explosive plays over 50, 60, and 70 yards. Can you explain that paradox? And two, what was it like when when Will slid into the secondary, and what was it like working with uh, Coach Muschamp back there on defense? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, first starting off with the explosive plays, I think what you'll see is they're, they're very creative on offense with what they do, and they do a great job attacking uh, poor eye discipline. Um, you know, there's there's multiple plays they use to set up the next play, whether it be play action runs to set up uh, to set up play action shots down the field, uh, whether it be their misdirection game um, with reverses, um, you know, flea flickers. They they do a great job utilizing trick plays. Um, to get the ball down, extended down the field, as well as those shots. And then, you know, to answer the second part of your question, you know, uh, Coach Muschamp has been invaluable to us. You know, just from an experience standpoint, I think uh, he, he does a good job of communicating with our players. I know our guys really love being coached by Will. Uh, I certainly love having him in the room. He's been a good guy for me to be able to lean on and our coaching staff to be able to lean on. Um, you know, with his experience and uh, just with his demeanor and his approach every day, the way he comes to work, it's, it's been fun to be around. Okay, next question for Chip Towers. Go ahead, Chip. Yeah, Coach, uh, uh, probably the uh, craziest thing about that SEC championship game, when I look at it, is zero sacks. Uh, that was certainly not you guys' MO at all this year. Uh, was that a product uh, uh, of scheme, do you think, or, or, or was that uh, uh, more, more of just what Alabama was able to do, you know, on the offensive line? And how different is it going to be? Is that necessary when playing somebody like Michigan? 
Yeah, I mean, always you want to be able to, to affect the passer, like I said before. Um, you know, I think it's a combination. You know, they did a great job doing some things different schematically, and then obviously you have a quarterback back there that's elusive and able to run. Um, you know, created some opportunities that were made, made it hard for us to get them down. Um, you know, several close calls that we weren't able to finish on, so certainly been a, a point of emphasis uh, for us moving forward and something we want to be able to take advantage of in this game. But they're a good offensive line. They do a good job uh, protecting the quarterback, so – we have to try to uh, find unique ways to create that pass rush. And next question for Mark Weiser. Hey, Dan, in, in terms of the, the defense for this game, what is different about the operation of the coaching staff wise, uh, you know, given that your plate's been full and uh, in the lead up to the game and, and then the game planning and, and who will call the plays Friday night? Yeah, our approach will be very similar to what it's been all season. No, nothing's really going to change from the way we operate, whether it be, um, you know, with, luckily with, with bowl prep, there is a lot more time. You know, there is a lot of time uh, to be able to get ready. And I think a lot of times people make the mistake of trying to do too much uh, in a shortened window, you know. So uh, we'll operate very similar to what we've operated all season. I'll still be making the calls. But every single one of our defensive coaches have been extremely involved uh, throughout the week, uh, throughout our preparation. And this is a team effort. It's been a, a team effort all season. That doesn't change for just this one game, whether it be Coach Smart's involvement, Coach Schumann, Coach Scott, Coach Adai, Coach Muschamp. Um, there's a lot of uh, hats and, and uh, there's a brain trust that kind of goes into how we operate and our players are very involved in that. So everything's going to be operating like it has uh, all season. And next question is for Zach Klein. Hey, Coach, what has Hassan uh, Haskins uh, done to get cooking uh, lately? Seven touchdowns his final two games. And have you uh, broken down a meeting by saying go Ducks instead of go Dogs? <laughs> no meetings here have been broken down uh, like that. No, great question. Um, you know, Hassan and really th their whole backfield, those guys are extremely physical. They run tough. Uh, I know for us, you know, personally, we've shown a lot of film of these guys breaking tackles. And the way they run, they run hard. Uh very rarely are they running to avoid contact. They're running to create contact. Uh, I think that shows up in the way that they play uh, week in and week out. But they have a real uh, disciplined approach. They're going to make sure that they emphasize running the ball. And that's shown up a lot with Hassan and, and, and all the running backs. Okay, next question is for Pat Forty. Hey, Dan, uh, question there. You, you mentioned how they attack eye discipline. How, how would you say that you guys, uh, eye, core eye discipline, sorry, your, your team's eye discipline has been, and how do you coach that? I think you just have to recreate uh, as much of that as possible within practice and within walkthroughs and film study. Um, you know, our, our players, are, you know, take a, a tremendous amount of pride in doing their jobs and doing it correctly. Um, you know, but you have to recreate some of those tough moments, some of those conflict plays uh, within practice. And you have to work set up plays in practice to set up a, a tougher play uh, throughout the game. And I would say at the end of the day, our, our guys have been really solid all, all season, um, you know, from an eye discipline standpoint. Certainly there's some moments that we feel like we could be a lot better. Um, but we, have, we challenge ourselves to try to make practice harder than the game. Um, and we've been able to do that, you know, for the most part this season. All right, we're going to take a couple more questions here. Next one is for Connor Riley. Hey, Dan, I want to ask you about Glenn Schumann and sort of how he has grown as a coach over your time together at Georgia, especially with him already sort of having the co-defensive coordinator role. Yeah, Glenn's a phenomenal coach. He's, he's also a great friend. Um, he cares about his players tremendously. They have a, a, a huge amount of respect uh, for Glenn and the way he, he works day in and day out. He's a diligent worker. He's extremely smart. Um, he's somebody that I've leaned on um, my entire time uh, here at Georgia, just because I have a, I have a lot of respect for how Glenn handles himself. He's obviously extremely intelligent and, and does a great job of helping us game plan and, and create, um, you know, opportunities for our players. So he's grown every single year as a coach. I think that's one of the things that's unique about this environment is coaches is developed this, this setup here where people can grow, you know, and we're, we're lifelong learners in this group. And Glenn's certainly an example of that. Okay, we'll do two more questions. Uh, next one's for Anthony Dasher. Hey, 
Oh, hey, Coach, sorry about that. Uh, ask you about Chris Smith just real quick. I know he's still a little bit banged up for the SEC championship game. How much has the three weeks off allowed him to maybe get back to his old self? And as far as the star position, I know William Poole got the start against Alabama. Is this a kind of a game where maybe Latavius Brady maybe kind of brought back to the folks? It's, it seems like this is more of a uh, suits his style of play. Yeah, I think the the time off in general for all of our players, including Chris, has been, you know, very beneficial from a recovery standpoint. Um, you know, our guys have been really working hard in the training room uh, to accelerate uh, some of that recovery. Um, and, and I know going into this game that both Poole and Brini both are attacking this thing, ready to, to go play and, and uh, go get to work. So excited to see what both those guys are able to do. Okay, last question before we bring in the players. Uh, go ahead, Dennis. Dennis Dodd, last one. Yeah, Dan, you mentioned um, the time difference in the West Coast. How late are you working if, if you're keeping the, uh, the Oregon work, I guess, to the second half of the day? Uh, you know, I don't clock in and clock out. Um, <laughs> we, we, we work until the work's done. Sometimes that's later than, than other nights. But um, we've hit a couple late nights. But, uh, you know, no lack of uh, energy or, uh, you know, uh, ability to roll here. I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity, obviously out there, tremendous opportunity. Um, but our players and coaches here have done a, a great job of, uh, affording me that opportunity. So I'm not going to do a dis disservice to our guys, uh, by not finishing this the right way and, and the effort that I put in to what we've done here. All right. Thank you, coach.